Hi everyone and welcome back to another video. Today we'll be talking about the evidence for the Big Bang and the expanding universe. So let's go ahead and get into it. Before we get any further, it is time for the most important question of this video, which is who's excited for physics? <laughs> So glad to have you here with me today. I know I'm very excited for today's lesson and so I hope you are too. Here are the things that we're going to address in this video. So the first question is, what is the Big Bang? We're going to learn in general what it is. The second one is, what evidence is there to support the Big Bang? And finally, third question is, how do we know about the expansion of the universe? To answer this last question, we'll be talking about the Doppler effect and redshift, blue shift. Let's start with the Big Bang. What is it? It's the idea that the universe was suddenly born and it is not infinite. However, the Big Bang was not an explosion, as its name might suggest. Rather, it was space stretching and stretching and stretching in all directions all at the same time. In other words, space was expanding into itself. During this process, the first element, hydrogen, was made along with matter and eventually the world and the universe as we know it. If you want to learn more about the specifics of the Big Bang, what happened afterward, the little steps in between, there are so many awesome videos like this one entitled The Beginning of Everything, The Big Bang, that I would encourage you to watch. Today we're going to focus on the evidence that supports the Big Bang. One piece of evidence is the presence of cosmic background radiation. It's also known as cosmic microwave background, and it is the oldest form of electromagnetic radiation, which is thought to be the remnant radiation from the Big Bang event. It is hypothesized that during the Big Bang, very hot gas expanded, and as it expanded, it started to cool down. If the Big Bang happened, then this gas must still be present, and indeed it is. The second piece of evidence is the expansion of the universe. The third piece of evidence is the relative abundances of different elements throughout the universe. The two elements that should be the most prevalent today are the first two elements that were formed, hydrogen and helium, which turns out to be true. And finally, the fourth piece of evidence are the known laws of physics, such as Einstein's theory of relativity. Today we'll be focusing on the second piece of evidence, evidence supporting that the universe is expanding today. So how do we know about the expansion of the universe? Well. To answer this question, we're going to need to understand something known as the Doppler effect. Before we talk about the Doppler effect and how it explains redshift blue shifts and therefore supports the Big Bang, we need to understand what it is. We've probably all experienced the Doppler effect at some point in our lives. A classic example of this is if you ever heard a police car ambulance passing by you when you're in the car. Just to remind ourselves, we're going to watch a short clip of an ambulance passing by. And as you watch, I want you to listen carefully to what the ambulance sounds like as it passes by. So, what did you notice? When you watched, did the sound from the ambulance sound the same throughout the entire video, or did it change? And hopefully you observed that it changed. What did the ambulance sound like when it was approaching the observer versus moving away from the observer? The Doppler effect is why we hear different sounds from an ambulance or a police car siren as a car moves towards you and away from you. But why does this happen? Let's define the Doppler effect. First, let's talk about when you would observe the Doppler effect. The Doppler effect happens when you have a source of waves moving with respect to an observer, so either toward an observer or away from an observer. For example, in the video that we saw before, the moving ambulance was producing sound waves that are moving toward and then away from an observer. So what is causing this Doppler effect? Let's start by describing what happens when the source of waves is stationary. In this case, the waves are evenly spreading out in all directions from the source. For example, if you were to stick your finger straight into a still pool of water, you would see ripples and waves moving in even concentric circles away from it. Now, what if the source of waves was to move? For instance, what if you were to start moving your finger over to the right? Well, then you would squish the waves in the direction of your movement, closer together, and the waves trailing from the direction of the movement would now be spaced farther apart. And what would the effect of this be? When the waves are moving toward the observer, you would get the waves squished together, which means that the wavelength is now shorter and there's an increase in the apparent frequency. On the other hand, when you're moving away from the observer, these waves are now farther apart, meaning the wavelength is now longer and there would be a decrease in the apparent frequency of those waves. Let's apply this to our example of the police car, which is producing sound in the form of a siren. When a police car is moving to the right like this, what sound would the girl hear and what would the boy hear? Based off this image, we know that they would not hear the same sound because the wavelengths look different. The car is moving toward the boy. Therefore, the sound waves are getting squished together and they're now 
shorter or smaller in wavelength and higher in frequency. This results in a higher pitched sound, like the piercing sound that we hear as a police car siren passes us on the street. On the other hand, the sound waves that the girl experiences are longer in wavelength and therefore lower in frequency. Therefore, the sound away from the girl is lower in pitch, like the change in sound we hear as a police car siren moves farther away from us on the street. As we know, sound waves are only one form of waves. Light is also a wave and therefore can be subject to this Doppler effect. In the case of visible light, the apparent change in frequency shifts the light toward different colors at the different ends of the spectrum. Let's remind ourselves of the visible spectrum. The colors span from red at one end of the spectrum, where the light has longer wavelength and lower frequency, to blue at the other end of the spectrum, where light has shorter wavelength and higher frequency. Let's say again that we have an object, in this case a star, emitting light toward a planet. If the star is moving toward the planet, then light waves will be squished together and move toward the blue end of the spectrum. Therefore, approaching objects would show short blue waves or demonstrate a blue shift. Now let's say instead the star is now moving away from a planet as seen above. Then the waves would be spaced farther apart from each other and therefore these light waves would have longer wavelengths and lower frequencies and would be shifted toward the red end of the spectrum. So how do we tell the planet is red or blue shifted? Remember that we can study stars using spectroscopes to get the spectrum of a star in the form of a bright line or emission spectrum or a dark line or absorption spectrum. In this example, we will look at absorption spectra. And in this picture, we currently see the normal absorption spectrum for an element. Based on these spectra, we can tell if the lines are shifted. If the absorption spectrum for an element is red shifted as compared to what it should normally look like, as in this picture above, then we know that the object is moving away from us. On the other hand, if the absorption spectrum for an element is blue shifted as compared to where the lines would normally be for that element, we know that the object is moving towards us. How does this all connect with evidence for the Big Bang? In the 1920s, Edwin Hubble noticed that the absorption and emission spectra lines of galaxies all had a red shift. He combined this information along with data he gathered about the brightness of galaxies to determine the velocity of galaxies. His findings on the red shift of galaxies brings us to two conclusions. The red shift means that galaxies are moving away from us. This means that the universe is expanding and getting bigger and bigger. This also means there must have been a start point that the universe expanded from, and scientists have been reversing this expansion and tracing it back to when all of the universe was contained in one point, which is known as the Big Bang. From his findings on the velocities of galaxies, he also found that the galaxies are not moving away from us at the same velocities. More specifically, the more distant galaxies are moving faster away from us. What this means is that the expansion of the universe is not happening at a constant velocity, it is actually speeding up or accelerating. This idea that the universe is expanding counters our assumptions on gravity and brings in concepts like general relativity and dark energy. But those are for another time. That brings us to the end of this video. In this video, we learned about what the Big Bang was, about the evidence that there is to support the Big Bang, and explained how we know that the universe is expanding by learning about the Doppler effect, how it applies to light, and causing there to be red or blue shifts. Thank you so much for tuning into this video. I hope you learned something new, and always remember, this is fine, and I can do it. I'll see you in the next video.